The link block is likely the second most used element in all of Webflow. I've used it for things like menu icons, slider arrows, accordion toggles, and more. But a link's purpose is to navigate to pages or sections, not to reveal content. We could try using Webflow's button element instead, but that's still just a link with a default class Webflow adds to make it look like a button. It's been impossible to add a true button element natively until Webflow recently added the custom element. With the custom element, we can head to settings and we can change its tag to be button. We can still give this a class like any of our other elements, and we can add other content inside our button. Let's give both our link block and our button the same data attribute to compare. We'll give it an area label, which is what screen readers will read when they're focused on it. We'll call this close light box, so they know what will happen if they were to click on this. And we'll do the same thing for our custom button, giving it close light box. Now, both of these have a Webflow interaction attached that will just animate these buttons on click. Let's see the difference. When we hit tab to focus on our link, it reads our message and says it's a link. Close light box, internal link. Since this isn't going to take the user to a new page, it's a little misleading to say it's a link. It would be better to say it's a button. Close light box, button. When we hover over the link, we get this low URL at the bottom. But when we hover over the button, it doesn't have that. For either of them, we can click to play our Webflow interaction. But whenever we're focused on the button, we can hit enter or hit spacebar, which is how a button should work. Whereas when we're focused on the link, it only works with enter, it does not work with spacebar. You may notice that our button element has some default padding given to it by Webflow and a default background color given by the browser. And that color could change from browser to browser. So we could of course just clear these out each time we create a button, but that could get slightly repetitive. So what we can do instead is inside any embed, we can add some CSS that targets every button element and applies all unset. This unsets all the default styles that were on the button, and then we can just add back the ones we want, like cursor pointer and its focus state. Now, if we don't apply a type to our button, all buttons have a default type of submit, which isn't a problem most of the time, but if we ever had this button inside a form, clicking on it could submit our form. So it's best practice just to set the type on our button to be button whenever you're gonna use it. There's also reset if you're using this to reset some values on a form. So this could be feel like a lot to add in, but if we just set up our default here, tag button, type button with everything we need, we could just turn this into a component. I'll clear out the elements and I'll just create a new component here called button. And then anytime I want to add a button in my project, all I have to do is add my button component, unlink it, and it's already the custom element with the tag of button and type equals button. If you'd like to learn more about the custom element, check out this video where I cover all the ins and outs of how to use it.